Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. This is 6.1. Make sure you're doing the 6.1 quiz with me at this moment. Here we go. All right, so we're going to talk about the uh, Supreme Court, federal court system, state court system in this uh, unit. So all anything that has a six in front of it is going to be dealing with the court system and the legal system. So equal justice for all. The goal of the legal system is equal justice under the law. Now, do we get that every single time? No, we don't. You know, there, there's been these moments recently which really come to light where, um, you know, systemically our courts and our justice system is kind of flawed. Um, so that's something you got to think about uh, when looking at these things and how to make it better and, you know, your voice could be heard in this later on whenever you get old enough to vote. So, uh, under the Constitution, all accused people have the right to a public trial and a lawyer. That wasn't always the case. There are moments in, in, this, in this world where um, you didn't get a lawyer, okay? Uh, and if you were poor and uneducated, it really hurt you. So, if they cannot afford a lawyer, the court will appoint and pay one for them. That costs the court quite a bit of money. Accused people are considered innocent until proven guilty, but in today's world, media uh, kind of puts it out there, and then people almost become guilty before they're ever charged with it or ever convicted of anything. So something you know in today's world is, is a little odd. Um, so they may ask for a review of their case if they think the court has made a, a mistake. That review is called an appeal. So question one is answered. The goal of the legal system is equal justice under the law. So let's go and move on. Uh, all right, federal courts. So the main job for a you know, federal court is to interpret the law. Um, and for a federal court, that would be interpreting the law under the Constitution, because that is the supreme law of the land. The main goal, again, is equal justice under the law. Now, Article 3 actually lays out what the court system should be. So it establishes the Supreme Court, gave Congress the power to establish lower federal courts. It's a checks and balances thing. Um, the Judiciary Act of 1789, uh, Congress established federal district courts and circuit courts, which is lower than the Supreme Court. Then the Judiciary Act of 1781, Congress established a system of federal appeals courts, um, which if you were to appeal or think that something happened in your case that didn't go well, you could always do that. Now, this is the federal court system, not the state court system. It's a little bit different on that level. <clears throat> so, question number two, Article 3. Um, all right, federal court. So, uh, three levels of the federal court system. We got at the very top is the Supreme Court. You know it, you've heard them before. Nine justices. Um, so, you know, Supreme Court's at the top. Then you have the Appeals Court, the United States Appeals Court in the middle, all right? Uh, you can see there that it has appellate jurisdiction, and that just means it has the right to hear the case for the second time. Um, there's no jury in the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeals. But there is a jury when it comes to U.S. District Court. How do I remember the order of these courts? I remember that the court system is sad. Supreme, appeal, district, okay? So that's how I remember it, sad. So the U.S. District Court, um, there are judges, there are juries, uh, and we'll go over what jurisdictions mean in, here in a second. Um, but, question number three, small claims court, Definitely not a part of the federal court system. All right, so jurisdiction, which you've heard before, you've heard this term. Um, it's in this case we're talking about courts jurisdiction. So the court's authority to hear and decide a case. Literally, it's just can this problem, civil or criminal, be addressed in this courtroom? And that's what the jurisdiction is. So original jurisdiction, this belongs to the court, which has the initial authority to hear the case. This is where the case starts, all right? So, um, 
exclusive jurisdiction. This means the jurisdiction belongs to only one group or court and can't go anywhere else. It can't be appealed. It can't do anything. It really solely belongs to that level of court, either supreme, appeals, or district. And then concurrent jurisdiction, this means that a case can be heard in one of several courts. Um, so question number four here, um, original jurisdiction belongs to the court which has the initial authority to hear the case. All right, so what types of cases can federal courts hear? So the Constitution gives federal courts jurisdiction over eight kinds of cases. One, if the law in question applies to the United States Constitution, again, that is the federal law, so if it applies to that, it's going to be in the federal courts. Violations under federal laws, so going against the Constitution. Uh, disputes between states, because if that's the case, then state law and state courts can't handle it, because it actually has, you know, if North Carolina and South Carolina were fighting over pollution, crossing over the state border, they couldn't... I mean, they could sue each other, and then the federal courts hear that. Uh, so Supreme Court has original jurisdiction there. Um, lawsuits between citizens from different states, that would be um, another state issue. So to hear that, you have to have, be a part of the national federal court system. Um, the federal government, um, so if the United States government sues someone or someone sues the United States government, you know, I mean, right now we're having this kind of happen. Well, the United States government is suing different polling places, right, from different states right now in this moment. Okay, so that is going to be heard through federal court systems. Number six, foreign government and foreign governments, ambassadors, treaties. So the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction, jurisdiction, jurisdiction over this. Number seven, this is what we're talking about with uh, question number five. Admiralty and maritime laws, so crimes on the high seas. Those are international waters, meaning that states cannot have any type of jurisdiction over those. It has to be federal courts, okay? So federal courts have jurisdiction over admiralty and maritime laws. That is true. Uh, and then cases involving United States diplomats, and those are just people who go and speak on behalf of the United States in other countries. Um, all right, lower federal, federal courts. Um, so the United States District Court is the bottom level of our SAD pyramid. Um, so the federal courts uh, where trials are held and lawsuits begin. This is where most of the stuff actually happens. There's 94 United States District Courts. For almost all federal cases, district courts have original jurisdiction, means, meaning that this is the place where it starts and that is what they can hear. They can hear this case originally. So they're responsible for determining the facts of the case and they hear both civil and criminal cases. So civil is two people suing each other and the criminal is somebody broke the law. Only federal courts that involve witnesses and juries hearing cases um, reaching verdicts. This is the only court system federally that has juries. Okay. So, da, 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 number six, U.S. district courts can only hear criminal cases. That's not true. They can hear the civil ones too. All right. Um, appeals court. So the middle level. Um, so they review decisions made in lower district courts, and they have this thing called appellate jurisdiction. Um, so that's the authority to hear a case appeal from a lower court. That's question number seven. <clears throat> um, so we have 12 U.S. courts of appeals. Um, each jurisdiction, my mom is texting. So 12 U.S. Courts of Appeals each has jurisdiction over their circuit, spread over the entire United States. Um, it's in a particular geographic area. But then there's a 13th Appeals Court, and that actually has nationwide jurisdiction. So I think I have a map of this. Yeah, 
There we go. Look at that. We're in number four over there. Uh, but that's how it's spread out across uh, the nation. And remember, the 13th actually has national jurisdiction. So, um, okay. And then finally, appeals courts do not hold trials. A panel of three or more judges reviews the cases uh, and listens to the arguments. They do not decide guilt or innocence or who should win a civil case. They really only decide if the previous trial was fair or not. Okay? So three decisions can be made. One, uphold. That confirms the lower court's decision, saying, you know what? They were right. Number two, they can overturn it. They can reverse the court's previous decision. Uh, and then three, remand, send case back to a lower court. Uh, lower court for a retrial. Decisions are final unless appealed to the Supreme Court. And really, the Supreme Court is that final boss. Okay? Let's just say that you go through the district court. It doesn't work out for you. Then you go to the appeals court, and they're like, man, we really just don't know. Then they're going to send it even higher to the Supreme Court, and that's where they're going to decide whether or not whatever is constitutional or not. Okay? So, all right, announcing a decision. So, one appellate judge writes an opinion that explains the legal thinking behind the court's decision in the case. Uh, the opinion sets a thing called a precedent. Do not confuse it with president or present. Okay, it is a precedent, and a precedent is what has happened before. It's a model for other judges to follow in making their own decisions on similar cases. Saying, ooh, you know what? This, is, this case involves a person stealing a Reese's cup from a gas station. But no, nobody's ever done that before for some reason, right? And so they're like, hmm, man, but we did try this case where somebody uh, stole a Snickers bar. They could use the, pres the precedent from that other case to see why or how or what the severity of the punishment should be. All right? Precedent is just an example that has happened before. All right? All right. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Federal judges, district courts have one plus judges. Yeah, so one or more judges. Uh, appeals court have three to 28 judges, which is crazy, right? The Supreme Court has nine justices. But that's not like a written thing. They can change that. They can actually add seats to the Supreme Court if they wanted to. Selection of federal judges. Obviously, we know the president appoints them. They have to be approved by the Senate. That just happened. This happened three times in the past four years. Um, so they nominate those with similar ideas about politics and justice. And that's really the long-lasting effect of a president because a Supreme Court justice term is life. All right? They serve life terms. They can only be removed through impeachment. Um, other court officials, U.S. attorneys, U.S. marshals, magistrates, U.S. attorneys represent the United States government in all federal cases. U.S. marshals make arrests, collect fines, take convicted people to prison. They protect juror, jurors. They keep order in the court. They serve subpoenas. Um, you guys know what subpoenas are? It's basically saying, here's, you're being summoned to court. Here's this document. You got to show up on this day. Uh, and then a magistrate just take care, takes care of much of the judge's routine work. And they're pretty much like on call all the time. And we're done. Hit me with that theme song and let's get out of here. <laughs>